Hiya, um, this is a re-recording of the demo that I gave in the first Knative community meetup. Um, we had some screen sharing issues, so I'm just recording a nice uh, fresh one for everyone that they can follow along without being three sides behind. Um, I'm going to show a really simple uh, Knative eventing demo that you can follow along with. Um, just to get to know how Knative eventing works and try out some reasonably cool stuff. Um, it's uh, basically going to be a simple Bitcoin event source that sends messages to a Knative broker. And then we've got an event display service that consumes these events and they're displayed in real time to a, a UI that will update. Um, I should highlight the basic Knative eventing components. So we've got a broker, some triggers, a couple of producers and consumers. Uh, we'll be streaming events in real time, doing a little bit of in-stream transformation, and we'll have some uh, a push-based front end. Um, so I use the blockchain, the Bitcoin data, because uh, it's a real rich data stream and it's free, I think. Twitter is a good uh, streaming data source as well, but it's quite overused. And also I think for companies like um, finance or insurance, uh, the, the, the Bitcoin messages or something like FinHub where you've got financial data is probably a bit more relevant. Um, you've got a really good uh, number of fields that you can play with in the data. So in each message, there's a range of different fields um i'll try and add an image actually to the repo um but just some ideas like from the data science side you could try predicting transaction fees you could um, classify transactions on the fly and send alerts um so for example later in part two of this demo we'll classify transactions based on the value size and you could send like an, an alert like a push based alert to say, hey, this transaction is really big. You need to take a look at it. Um, you can also do some really cool visualization stuff with um, this data. So I've put a link below. Um, I think it's actually for a product which I'm not endorsing, but the visualization is really cool, um, which you could also try. So to run this demo, you need a few things installed um, which you can look at the Knative docs to get instructions for how to do that. Um, all of the code for this demo can be found in GitHub um, at the following link. So the top one is the readme and files for deploying this, this demo and the other um, repo is the just the event source for the Bitcoin messages. Um, I've also got a blog where I've got a couple of Knative tutorials. Um, there's stuff mainly on there to do with event-driven architectures and big data. So um, one of the things that I really wanted to, to look at was why would someone even do this? Um, I think, you know, there are other ways to do what I'm about to show you. And I think I wanted to highlight the following advantages. One is that Knative is good if you want to do push-based messaging. Um, we've got a true decoupling of producers and consumers, which again, I've written more in depth about on my blog, particularly on that point. Um, we can apply business logic while data's in motion. And this is good. This is really handy for data streams. We're working with real-time event streams. Um, especially for things like fraud detection, where we need to make really fast decisions as the transaction's happening. Um, and also eventing's really good for things like ML ops. And when you get into architectures like the rendezvous architecture, which I'd like to work to build out a bit further using Knative eventing, um, which I haven't done yet. So this is what we're gonna deploy. Um, for part one, basically we've got a WebSocket, which is the blockchain.info WebSocket, and it's streaming messages. 
Um, our event source is reading the messages, turning them into new cloud events, and then sending them onto a broker. And then we've got an event display, which is subscribed to these events via our trigger, and it's updating a UI front end in real time. So I'm going to switch over to terminal window so that I can uh, run through the first part with you. So in the repo, which is what I've got open at the moment, um, there's a few folders in there, the source blockchain, event display UI and classifier transaction size are the fo folders that you need if you want to build the images for those services yourself. Uh, if you just want to run the demo, you can just go into the YAML folder and in there, there's a number of deployments that you need to get this running. Um, the first one we're going to do is we're going to apply this um, namespace YAML. That creates a namespace um, called Knative Eventing WebSocket Source and it enables Knative Eventing in that namespace. Uh, so we create a broker at that point. Um, if you want to change the namespace name, that's fine. You'll just need to change all the other YAML files because they have the namespace has card coded in. Um, <clears throat> we're then going to apply the um, deployment file. So this is our source. This is the one that takes the messages from the WebSocket <clears throat> and syncs them into the broker. Um, and then we're going to apply our trigger and this basically subscribes anything that comes from the blockchain source and it's going to say please subscribe our UI front end to it so our event display service um, and then we're going to deploy the, the the event display service which is in 050 and 060 because it's a Kubernetes deployment so there's two files associated with this one um, <clears throat> and now if we head over to um, our local host 31234 which is the port that this is running on we've got our transaction and you can see the transactions are coming through in real time and this front end is updating. Um, so that's part one. Um, I'm going to just delete the last deployment because um, I'm running on Docker desktop and it doesn't like it if I try to run too much stuff, but there is no real reason why you couldn't run this all together. But just so that this does not crash out, I'm gonna just delete these ones. Oh, that one's gone. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to go back to my presentation now. <clears throat> so I've put some useful commands that you might want to use while you're doing this, but they're all in the readme as well. <clears throat> um... Like I said earlier, you could swap out uh, using the Bitcoin source to be a different WebSocket. So you could use FinHub, as I mentioned before. I'd like to add an example for swapping out in the future. So hopefully that will come soon. Before I move on to part two, I just wanted to run through what the WebSocket source um, application is doing. So for the Bitcoin source. <clears throat> so first um so first um we import the eventing and websocket client so um that's the cloud events and gorilla websocket packages um we define the websocket source url so that's our blockchain.info pay uh, address that we use um we're gonna read in the sync so the sync in this case, um, so the sync is where do we want these cloud events to go? And in this case, we want them to go to the broker. 
and we push this in from the YAML that we deploy. So in the YAML, we just specify our sync address. And the way we get the broker URL is by doing this kubectl get broker command. Um, and you'll see it will return you a URL and that is the, um, the URL of your broker that you need to sync to. Next in the code, we pass the config env variables. We set up a cloud event sync and we set up a cloud event client using HTTP transport for the sync. Then we connect to the specified WebSocket URL. So that's our source that we um, specified at the top. And then we need to send this op unconfirmed sub message to the WebSocket to initiate the transaction stream. And then our messages will start coming through. Then we read each transaction message from the WebSocket and we're going to create a new cloud event uh, for each message that we get. And when we create this new cloud event, we're going to set some of the fields. So we're going to set the type to WebSocket event. We're going to set the source to be the source that we um, specified at the top, which was our blockchain.info WebSocket. Um, and the message is the message that we pass. <clears throat> okay, so for part two, um, I wanted to build out the first bit a bit just to show something a bit more like what you might do for a real business scenario. So we've got the messages going to our event display, which is the top part. And then I wanted to add a, a really simple um, classifier that might simulate something that maybe you might do as part of a data science or analytics uh, workflow. So <clears throat> we've got a really simple classification service, which is our classifier, which is going to be subscribed to the blockchain events coming through. It receives them and then it classifies them as small or large. It's really simple for now, but it's just to illustrate the concept. Um, it then creates a reply event with the classified size, which it sends back out into the Knative eventing ecosystem. And then another service, which is our test display service, subscribes to our classification reply message. And it's just going to log it. <clears throat> so just log it out. So I'm going to go back to terminal. Um, <clears throat> and then in the, um, so in the YAML folder, you'll see there's another folder called classification. So we're going to go there and in here, there's some more, um, some more YAMLs. So the first one that we're going to apply is the, the trigger. And this is the first trigger. So this is the trigger that says anything that comes from blockchain WebSocket events is going to go to my new classifier service, which is not running yet. And then we're going to apply the classifier service. And then I'm going to apply the, um, the second trigger, which is going to say <clears throat> um, that's going to be our test display is subscribed to our classified messages. So the ones that are sent back out. And then if we go back up just one level, we're going to just um, apply this 030 test display service. <clears throat> so now if we look at what we've got, so we've got our classifier service, our test display service, and then we've got these triggers set up and the subscriber URIs are what we want them to be. So now if we look at the logs for this service, for the test display service, which is only subscribing to our size classified messages, 
we should just get those coming through <clears throat> and we can see here the messages are coming through and for each message that it receives it's classifying it as large or small okay so that's it and obviously you can make it much more complicated so if you look in the in the folder for um, if you look in the classifier transaction size folder you'll see the code for the classifier and you'll see that it's really not very complicated but um, you could make it as complicated as you want um, so um, as part of that process there's a few things that I needed to do so I needed to unmarshal the message that comes through and all of that is in the is in the repo so you can see how all of that was done um, and the struct to unmarshal it is all there um, so I said that in the future near future I'd like to look at more complex ML patterns and one of them in particular is the rendezvous architecture um, which I haven't I haven't built this yet but this is like what I'd like to do next I'd also like to add some other models so maybe one of these models might be like my go classifier but I also want to have some that are maybe written in Python um, the repo is still like a work in progress but um, I hope to add some more stuff very soon um, so eventing is really cool uh, but it can be quite tricky um, to get your head around and sometimes it's hard to find real examples of what you want to do. So these are sources of great information that I found really helpful. I think particularly this um, Medium article I went back to many times to just try and figure out how to do some of this stuff. So that was really good. Um, but also, you know, all of these and, and many more that I probably can't even remember I looked at. Um, I mentioned this on the call but I'll just mention it again that the areas that I think could be added to by the community are I thought the cloud, the KN cloud events package docs were, well there weren't really any and there weren't many use cases. It would be nice to see some more use cases for that. Um, I think also just having some more realistic business use cases and patterns for K-native eventing that speak to maybe a higher level of the business um, would be really interesting. Um, thanks for listening. I welcome any feedback or suggestions. I'm really new to all of this um, event-driven and cloud-native stuff, so I'm always open to ideas and there's definitely room for improvement um so please uh, go play with the demo let me know what you think and let me know if you do something really cool with it and that's all thank you